Hello and welcome back to Linear Algebra Part 10. Now before we start, I really want to thank all the nice people who support this channel on Steady, via PayPal or by other means. Now today's part will be about the so-called cross product, also known as the vector product. Indeed, this is a product of two vectors that only exists in R3. Therefore, if you see someone using this product, you immediately know we are dealing with vectors with three components. So you see, this is totally different to the inner product we have discussed in the last video. In fact, in some sense, this will be an outer product. Or more precisely, the cross product is a map with two inputs. As for the inner product, the two inputs are just two vectors. However, now the output is also a vector as well. So you see, this is a very concrete product we discuss here. It's not so abstract because we can visualize it in the space. Moreover, all the properties can be nicely visualized. However, before we talk about the properties, I want to give you the concrete definition and how to calculate this cross product. So what we need are two vectors and let's call them u and v. Moreover, we can immediately write them with three components. This is helpful because there's a nice way to remember this formula for the cross product. But first note, the cross product is a new vector denoted with u times v. So we write it with one vector on the left hand side, then the cross symbol and one vector on the right hand side. And of course, by using the components, this would look like this. Okay, now this represents a new vector we can calculate by using the components. And I think this is easy to remember when you start here in the middle and go one step down. This means that first here we have u2 times v3. And then we just mirror this line here and go from u3 to v2. And then the important thing is we add a minus sign. So in summary, we subtract u3 times v2. Okay, and with this, we have the first component of the cross product and know how to calculate it. Now, please recall, we started here in the middle and now we go one step down. More precisely, this means that we start at u3 and go to the top. So here in the second component, we have u3 times v1. Then again, we mirror this line, so we have u1 combined with v3. And please don't forget, we add a minus sign in front of this product. Okay, and with this, we have the second component of the cross product. So you know, we are at the position u3, and now we go one step down, which means we overflow to u1. Hence, starting from this position, we calculate the last component here. More concretely, there we now combine u1 with v2. And this is the product we put into the third component here. And then you already know, we have to reflect this line to get the product with the minus sign. Hence, we have u2 times v1. So you see, this is one possibility to remember this formula for the cross product. So I would say it looks more complicated than it really is because the formula is easy to remember. In fact, it's not important how you remember this nice formula, but it's important that you remember it. So if you want, I can give you immediately an alternative definition to this one. However, for this one, you need the Levi Civita symbol given by an epsilon with three indices. Indeed, if you are interested, I have a very short video explaining this symbol. But for this course, I would say it's not necessary to understand this symbol at this point. However, if you use this symbol, it's possible to write the cross product as a sum over three indices i, j and k. And all of them should run from 1 to 3. And then comes the Levi Civita symbol written as epsilon i j k. Then the ith component of u. And then the jth component of v. 
And moreover, we also multiply with the canonical unit vector ek. In fact, this is important because only this vector makes the whole sum to a vector again. Now, I also think this formula is nicely to remember because i, j, k come in the correct order here. However, of course, the result here is the same as the component form from above. Nevertheless, I can tell you for some proofs it's easier to use the Levi-Civita symbol here. However, for the moment I would say it's good enough when you remember this formula here. Because then we are able to talk about some nice properties this cross product has. Now, the first I call orthogonality because this new vector u times v is orthogonal to u and to v. Indeed, this is what you really should remember because it helps us when we want to find orthogonal vectors. And now we know the cross product is orthogonal to both vectors. And of course, I should emphasize this property is with respect to the standard inner product we have discussed in the last video. This means the inner product of u times v with u is zero and the inner product u times v with v is zero. Indeed, this is not hard to prove. It comes out when you use this formula here in the standard inner product. Visually speaking, this means that if we have the two vectors u and v in the space, then the cross product is a vector that goes orthogonally into the third direction. So this is something you can imagine, but then two questions arise. First, you should ask in which direction does the vector go? And second, we can ask how long is the vector? Hence, the first question would be about the orientation of the vector. Indeed, this is something we call the right hand rule because you can remember that by using a right hand. So what you need are three fingers of the right hand, the thumb, the index finger and the middle finger. Indeed, I think the best way to remember it is to start with your thumb, which represents the first vector, namely u. So your thumb points in the direction of u and then you take your index finger and it should point in the direction of the second vector, which is v. And then finally you should lift your middle finger to a right angle and then it shows the direction of u cross v. And now because the right hand is formed in this way, this right hand rule gives us the direction of the vector u times v. Just with this first property we had two options, but the second property now fixes this. However, of course also this one comes out of the formula from above. And now we just have to answer the last question, how long is this vector? In other words, what is the Euclidean norm of u times v? And of course, this should be given by the two vectors u and v. More precisely, it's the area of the parallelogram the two vectors u and v span. This means that we need parallel lines here and there. And then the length of the vector u cross v should be the area here. So you see, this is not complicated at all and something that can be useful in geometry. For example, if you want to calculate the area of a triangle, half of the area of the parallelogram can help you. Hence, also this property of the cross product can be very useful. So in summary, please remember the three properties of the cross product. Okay, and to close this video, I would say, let's look at an example. So this shouldn't be a complicated one, so let's take some simple vectors in R3. Maybe let's take u as 2, 1, 0 and v as 0, 1, 0. Therefore, in the xy plane, we can nicely visualize them. More precisely, this should look something like this. And now I would say, let's simply calculate u cross v. In other words, I want to use the calculation rule from above. So therefore, you know, we start in the middle with 1 times 0. And then we reflect this and subtract 0 times 1. So we immediately see the first component is 0. Okay, 
then let's go to the second component. And there we should combine 0 here with 0. And then we should subtract 2 times 0. So you see, also here, not complicated at all. Namely, also the second component is 0. Ok, then let's go to the third component where we start at this position. So we have 2 times 1 and we subtract 1 times 0. And there you see, finally something remains. It's the factor 2. So in summary, this here is our cross product. Ok, then I would say, let's check the three properties from above. First, orthogonality. So this vector here goes completely in the z direction, where we have zeros in the two vectors here. So clearly we see we have orthogonality. Ok, now for checking the right hand rule, you have to use your thumb and your index finger here. And then you should see, your middle finger goes in the positive z direction. So we immediately see that this fits. Therefore, only the question about the length remains here. However, we see that the length of this vector here is exactly 2. And of course, here for the vectors u and v in the xy plane, we know here is the number 2 and there is the number 1. Moreover, we know the length of this vector is about the area of this parallelogram. However, as usual for parallelograms, we can split it up into two triangles and push the one triangle to the bottom here. In other words, the area of this parallelogram is the same as the area of this rectangle there. Which is simply given by 2 times 1. So the area here is 2 as the length of this vector. Therefore, in summary, also the third property here is satisfied. Ok, with this I would say you now know how to calculate the cross product of two vectors in R3. Moreover, you also know three important properties of the resulting vector. And maybe to close this video I should tell you that the cross product is not commutative. You see this immediately because of the right hand rule, the order of the two vectors u and v matters. So maybe you can check that for this example here. Moreover, you also find the link to the quiz of this video in the description. Ok, and with this I would say we see us in the next video when we go into the abstract world again. Therefore, I really hope that I see you there. Have a nice day and bye.